What's up, Internet? You're tuned in episode 36 of the Flip Screen Games Podcast, a weekly video game podcast where two best buds from different nations come together and discuss the wide, wide world of video games. I'm your host, Pete and Bessie, joined as always by my very good friend and co-host, the owner of a shiny <laughs> new Steam Deck, Mr. Stephen Radford. Hello, hello. Mr. Steeman Rad, that sounds bad. No, that's not. Yeah, good. That, that doesn't sound. I don't good. like that. I don't like that at all. Yeah. We're gonna stick with. I'm. I'm. Am I steaming himbo? Is that what it is? Ooh, that's got all kinds of connotations. I'm not comfortable with. <laughs> 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 so uh, I'm not gonna bury the lead on this one. Steve got a Steam Deck, and we're gonna talk about it all episode today. We have. Oh, there we go. We got the case and everything. Uh, we've got one one game to talk about in the what we're playing, and then after that, it's all Steam Deck, all right? So it's going to be a good one. Buckle in. A bunch of you wrote in with your questions about the Steam Deck and uh, kind of wondering about Steve's first impressions, first couple hours with it. We're going to get into all of those questions and much, much more on this week's episode of the Flip Screen Games podcast. But first, let me remind you, that this week's show is brought to you by our Patreon producers for the month of April. They are, of course, Christian Oliveria, Christopher Valenz, Gabriel Hasselmeyer, a.k.a. Sobe, Mary Berry, Smokey Shake, Wakahula, and Zaid Ida. Thank you all so much for your support over on Patreon.com slash FlipScreenGames. Thank you to all of you who tuned in for our live unboxing of the Steam Deck over on Twitch. If you missed it, the VOD is up over on our YouTube channel. It's live for everybody, so even if you're not a patron, you can go and check that out. We thought, what a momentous occasion it is to unbox this device. <laughs> you're going to have to check it out. You're going to want to be there for it. So go check it out. Yeah. We'll have a link to that down below. It came in too early. I was I was going to wait for Americans to wake up, but I was just like, fuck that. I, I want to play with my Steam Deck. So fuck those like, Americans. Fuck I'm, going straight, I'm going straight on, on Twitch. I'm going to unbox this thing. I'm yeah, it was funny. I woke up and I had a like, Twitch notification that was like, oh, Steve went live at like five in the morning. It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, there was no no way any Americans were, were going to tune in, but we had a bunch of people pop in and <laughs> some some new people coming in asking questions about it, which was fun. Yeah, so if you want to go check that out, um, you can go. You can go catch it on the YouTube channel. We'll have some B-roll of it throughout this episode, so you'll you'll get a little taste of it. But if you want to see the all the all that unboxing glory, uh, you're gonna want to go check that out. Um, and we've got some cool uh, footage for you of you know Steve uh, like messing around with the UI, playing some games. So you'll actually get to look at the Steam Deck if you are watching over on YouTube. So if you're an audio only listener, you might want to go click over to the YouTube version of this week's show. And hey, while you're over there, give us a like, give us a share, give us a subscribe. You know, if you're only on the audio side, you've never done the YouTube thing, it's, it's a vanity metric, but it really helps. So go give us a sub, uh, go give the episode a view. We'd really appreciate it. Speaking of things that we appreciate, your support over on patreon.com is something that we appreciate and can get you access to a bunch of extra perks and goodies like our Twitch archive, like our weekly podcast, One More Thing, where Steve and I talk about what's going on outside the world of gaming. Or sometimes we talk about the Steam Deck because we talked about the Steam Deck a lot last week, the week before it showed up. So who knows? It's a grab bag. You'll have a good time. If you enjoy this yeah. show, you should enjoy that show too. I, I, I think it's the best podcast on the internet. We've said that before. Nobody. The only way you can prove me wrong is if you pay money to listen to it. So think about that um but aside from that there's a bunch of free ways that you can get involved with the community get involved with the show uh, of course you can write into us at questions at flipscreen.games you can come join our discord where the conversation keeps rolling after the show ends you can come and tune into one of our weekly twitch streams we're all over the web making all kinds of good content for you so wherever you choose to engage we appreciate you thank you for spending your time here with us at flip screen games and showing your support however you choose to we appreciate you. Speaking of things that we appreciate, even though I already said that segue, I have to talk about this because we played a little game this week that we both really enjoyed called Stackland. And it's interesting for a myriad of reasons. It's a very fun game on its face. We had a little impromptu stream uh, back last Monday. We should put that up on the YouTube channel too for everybody now that I'm thinking about it. That was a great stream. We should throw that up. Um, and we, we, we got codes, uh, from sock pop, the developer, which is a really, really cool team. They have a Patreon 
And once a month, they develop a new game kind of like in loose collaboration with their community where like they get feedback, the community gets to play test it. And the games that are the ones that they feel have the most juice, they kind of finalize and they throw them up on Steam and, you know, um, put them out as a proper release. So really, really cool, really interesting project. Uh, we reached out to them because we were interested in, in what they were doing, and they were nice enough to send us uh, four codes for Stackland so that Steve, Chewie, and I could all have our own copy, and we would have one for giveaway. So what we're going to do is over on the Patreon, we're going to be giving that away to one of our lucky patrons. So if you want to get a free copy of the game, you're not already a Patreon supporter, make sure you go and support us uh, at you know it's the, the lowest level. We'll get you an entry. Um, so if you've thought about supporting the Patreon and you want to get a free game, you know, hey, it's a great opportunity for you to go get some of those extra perks and goodies, check out one more thing, and also potentially grab a copy of Sock Pop's latest game, uh, which we're really enjoying. Um, so yeah. now that the plugs are out of the way, right? Like, that game is really fun. It's really, really good and really smartly designed. Yeah, what was it? Banana on the Twitch called it like Minecraft with cards. It's like kind of like you get packs of cards, sort of like trading cards packs that you you buy with coins. You get, and in them are like random items. But you use those items in order to like build out a village. You need to grow villagers. Eventually, those villagers might need to become militia to fight things and go exploring. And you've got to level up each time, right? You've got to turn your campfire into a stove so you can cook more. You need to turn your rock into bricks so you can build different things. Or like you can build a house and then like if you have shelter, like your villagers can have a baby and you can make more villagers that way. And like there are like random events that happen in the overworld where like, um, you know, like a portal random will open portals, and like yeah. monsters come out and if you don't have enough villagers or they don't have weapons or you don't have a militia, like they can wipe your whole town and that'll be the end of your run. So like it has – it's it's weird because it's like elements of like Minecraft and like survival games like that, you know, like Rust and – Very much so because like you need the recipes, right? So you need right. to know that two uh, – like a, a wood and a person – makes a stick and like two sticks and a piece of wood makes a spear and you need to know those things in order to be able to create them and you can experiment like with food for example like we experimented and we put i think someone came into the the twitch and was like you know you can make fruit salad if you put a berry and an apple together and so we never even had that recipe come out but if you buy the packs some of the packs randomly tell you what one of the they're called like ideas so it's like an idea for food or an idea for a building um, yeah, and you can either like, like a load of. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, I was saying, but there's like a load of conditions around them, right? Because you've really got to strategize well. Because it might seem easy at face value, but you need to have enough food in order to feed your villagers. So you can't just have too many villagers because otherwise you can't feed them all. And there's like a card limit which you can expand by building specific buildings in the game, which allow you to hold more cards on the table. But if you don't do that and you don't strategize well enough, you'll quickly get in a position where you have to sell some cards that you were saving because the each round, each day, each moon cycle is too small, really, to be able to get all of the resources and pull them all together to be able to build the building you want to do and also be able to complete that building in that time. So you're going to end up having to sell cards if you don't strategize and, and expand this card limit pretty quickly. And it's it's interesting, too, because <clears throat> the whole loop, right, is tied to moons is how they designate time. But it's not turn-based, right? So it's like you have a clock that's just ticking constantly. And, like, you need to be making decisions and making choices and, like, making sure that you're making the most of the time that you have because as you grow your settlement and you have more mouths to feed, you need to be producing food to keep them all alive or the people die if they don't have like you, you need to feed them half of what their health is in food so like a regular villager takes two pieces of food right to survive so you need more villagers to continue to build things and to defend the you know the town as like turns progress because as you get into like closer to like 20 turns they start just dropping things on you now and then that will 
you know. Yeah, or if you get one of the areas you can explore, like there's purple cards that come out of some of the packs, and you can go, you can send someone off to go and explore. But while they're out exploring, they can bring back nice things, like they might bring back a treasure chest that you can open that might have something cool in. Or they might bring back something nasty, like a wolf or a bear, or a giant rat that you've got to take down with, with villagers or militia that you have in your town. So yeah, so there's this like constant like war of escalation, and I think that's the thing that I find most challenging is as your settlement gets bigger and you have more things you want to achieve, you need to be really judicious about how you spend your time because you it's like okay, like I want to build this, you know, I don't know, I want to build a warehouse so I can have more stuff, or I want to build a quarry so I have access consistently to stone or something like that. Okay, that's all well and good, but while you're working on that. You also have to keep all your people alive and make sure that you're building enough of a defense so that when hell inevitably comes up, you have the ability to respond to it. Because that's how I've lost every run that I've lost, is I was working on something and something unexpected happened and then it just careens, right? And it's like, okay, we got attacked by like five bears and like we're dead because I didn't have any I didn't have any people with weapons, you know, or, or I had... Yeah two guys with weapons and nothing showed up so they were a waste of resources and okay great well now i don't have anything and i'm dead you know and it's like you really need to be cognizant of how quickly time is going by and making sure that like you have that was something that we when we were streaming it together we're like we need goals like we need to go into every moon with like this is the thing we're doing goal yeah you really do you have to set yourself a goal and have your eye on the prize but it's quite difficult to manage the cards as well especially if you have animals and you haven't built animal pens like i the animal pen i thought was such a ripoff but now having played the game a lot more like i'm up to like moon 30 i need to build animal pens because those fucking rabbits just moving they move they like move around the screen like the card literally moves around the and screen. it pushes other and it cards knocks all of the other cards so if you've like got a nice stack like a nice area where you have because I, I, I lay it all out. So I have like, I've got a food production corner and yep. I've got like a, a brick area where I'm making like stone and then it's going into like the building that turns it into bricks. So I've got like a sawmill in another corner, like a residential area with houses. It's kind yep. of ridiculous. Yeah, I did the same but thing. But it moves it all. So it's just like, oh shit, where are the berries gone now that I was going to use in order to make some fruit salads in them? Well, they're gone and tough shit because you've got to now try and find them because the rabbits pushed it all over to the other side of the screen. And you always want to be keeping an eye on on stuff like that as well because food production, like you say, is really important. Well, if the rabbit poops, you can grow stuff in it. And you need to be able to notice that while you're also doing all of your other stuff and quickly grab a berry or quickly grab an apple and put something in it. It's really, really cool. Yeah, I, I'm really surprised by how dynamic the game is, right? Like, Because it's like... It... I think it, it is a thing that sounds simple on its face, but it has so many systems. And, like, you know, you just said apparently they're adding a bunch of new stuff because they were, like, overwhelmed by the response to the game, which is awesome. I'm not surprised because, again, this was a game we said we were going to stream for, like, an hour, and we streamed it for, like, three and a half, and people were really into it. So, like, it's it's clearly got juice, you know? Um, I don't think I'm very good at it because they say it only has three to five hours of gameplay. I've played it for seven hours and I still haven't finished the game. Yeah, I haven't. So I don't think either. I'm particularly great at this game. It's hard. It's but a hard it's, game. I think I think it's also testament to the game, though, that you are constantly talking about how you don't want to set a PC to play a game. And yet this one hooked you enough in order to be able to to play it. Like you sat there. like I, We sat here, streamed it for three hours with no issue. I Granted downloaded it on my laptop was... and played it that night. I've been playing it in bed on my fucking laptop. That's how much I like oh, it. Oh, that's good. That's a good play. That's a good way to do right? it. Right? Like, that's... You, and I was going to say, granted, you sat here when you had the most delicious looking sandwich that everyone oh, in stream was like I said, jealous of. We got to put that... We got to just put that stream up. Let's put that live because that was fun. And yeah, I just... I'm hanging back. Steve's steering. I'm eating a cheesesteak. I was living my best life that day, you know? <laughs> so yeah the update the futurist stacklands it says some background stacklands was released as part of the sock pop patreon where we release a new game every month and we release a lot of games and so most of our games don't really get any updates however because stacklands was so well received we're going to start working on content updates we're planning to release multiple updates that slowly introduce new content and these will be released between mid-may and the end of june for every update we're going to add between uh, add 50 to 100 cards and after these updates stacklands will move to version 2 
uh, and will most likely increase the price of the game after this, but kind of like Minecraft did. And that's something worth stating. This game costs three pounds, three ninety nine. It's, it's a five dollar game. Like if you're interested and you don't win the the, the giveaway that we're going to be doing over on Patreon. Please check this out anyway, because it's so cheap and it's so fun. And if they're adding like 200 new cards, I can't imagine how much, how many like new recipes and things there's going to be, how much you can actually do, how many moon cycles you'll be able to go through. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. I, I said this to you. I, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to check out some more of their stuff. And like, I really want to try to get them on the show for an interview because I just think what they do is so interesting. It's such a cool project. Um, and yeah, it's cool yeah, that like cool concept. And like they're such a small team. Like they're only like four people. And it's super cool yeah. that they're like, oh yeah, this hit, like let's spend some more time on it. We have the freedom to do that, because the only people that we have to answer to is our community, right? And it's like I'm sure this community is digging the game and is excited to get more content for it. That's how I feel. Well, right? and also and also excited to see probably one of their favorite developers if they're supporting them on Patreon have a really successful game, have a really successful release, something that's like seemingly a breakout hit for them so far. I hadn't heard of this developer until I saw this game pop up on my Twitter feed from um, another developer uh, posted about it and, and was talking about how he was obsessed with the game and ended up losing like three hours of his life to it last night. Yeah. And we did the exact same thing. And I was like, this looks 100% like my game and, and Chewy's game. And I didn't realize it would be your kind of game because I thought, oh, PC, Pete's not going to play it. I instantly dismissed that you would even touch this game because you still haven't played Inscription. And um, they didn't send uh, me a code for Inscription as well. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll buy you a copy of Inscription if that's what it takes for you to play one of my favorite games of of twenty twenty one. I will buy you a copy of Inscription. All right, deal. <laughs> <laughs> you saw they the the, the 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 audience was like, here, here's a copy of Elden Ring, and I was like, okay, I'll play it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, okay, yeah, inscription, and you got to stream it until act, at least until Act Two, because after Act Two, I don't think anyone should stream it because it spoils the game. Okay, we'll have to talk about that because okay, we'll we'll have a conversation about this, but I'm I'm into that. But yeah, I I'm really really interested in checking out more of their work and keeping up with them. I think Sock Pop is a really really interesting team, like one to watch for sure. Um, so yeah, Stacklands. I mean, I know a bunch of people in the community already bought it after the stream and I've recommended it to a few friends and they went and bought it. Cause I was like, it's $3, go buy it. Um, so I think we've already probably guaranteed a couple sales of this game, but I really, I really implore you to check it out. If it sounds at all interesting to you, it's $3, throw them the three bucks, give it a shot. I think it's, it's worth your time for sure. Um, and I mean like, also I, I'll say, right. Uh, I think anybody who listens to the show regularly would know this already, but if this is your first episode, something like that, like they gave us a code. So if you want to take our opinions with a grain of salt, that's fine. But if I got a code to a game and I didn't like it, I would be very honest about that. I have been in the past. Um, go check out some of my reviews on lootpots.com cause they are scathing. Um, <laughs> and I got, I got reviews codes for those games. <laughs> so, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, I think you could take, take the opinion to the bank, but, um, probably worth adding that disclaimer, you know. So, uh, let's get into the main event here. Steve, you got a Steam Deck. I, I did get a Steam Deck. Very excited. I have talked to you about it a good amount, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. Folks watching now, you can check out some B-roll of the unboxing here while we chat. I, I got to say, I'm having a little bit of FOMO. Seeing yeah. you go through the process, you're having fun with it, you're unboxing it, you're setting stuff up. I'm like, you know, I I feel a little jealous. I want to be fooling around with the Steam Deck, fucking around, downloading emulators and stuff. It sounds like a good time. but It's a really good time. So, so you got it as of the time we're listening to this, what? It's been... I got it yesterday morning okay. around about... So roughly uh, a day with it. Yeah. So yeah, about day, day and a half. Where are you, you know, and we're going to talk about this. We have specific questions and everything, but just top level. How are you feeling about it? How do you like it as a unit? How have you been getting on with, you know, getting things installed? And like, I know you've set up a lot of third party launchers and figured out emulators. Like, how has that process been like working with the UI, setting that stuff up? Has it been cumbersome? Has it, you know, whatever. And then like, 
for what you've touched on it gameplay wise, like how are you enjoying the build quality and the experience of actually playing on it? Mm-hmm. So uh, I think general first impressions are extremely positive. I absolutely love the device. I think it feels great in the hand. It's clearly solidly built. It's all made of plastic. It feels a lot lighter than I expected, I think. And it's not because I've picked up the Switch next to this thing and it's heavy. But when it's in both of your hands, I think because of the, the sheer size of it, the weight is distributed quite well. And it seems quite top heavy. So it like angles it towards your hands like they've clearly th- thought about the ergonomics when they built the thing uh how I, much I, heavier is it than a switch uh i don't actually know the 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 way it's probably in my my hands probably at 10 to 20 percent heavier it's not significant okay heavier. so not like a huge amount but it's noticeably no. heavier yeah it's noticeably heavy if you're the kind of person who holds it above your head like the switch above your head while you're playing in bed which i'm not i'm a Hold it down, usually resting on my on my body. Yeah, uh, kind of player. Uh, I'm worried that's gonna bother struggle. my hands because I don't. I have a problem sometimes when I'm sitting in bed, like holding the switch like that. For I don't know why I picked up this controller. Like that was gonna help me illustrate. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like doing this, right? Like the I'm resting my arms and I have it on my chest or something, and like the blood will drain from my hands sometimes and i'm like oh like i've been like my hands are up at a weird angle for too long like that's you know it so i'm, I'm wondering so if, if that's going to be a problem it, for me yeah if you're holding it up it probably would but because of the the grips on this like you can hold this like an actual controller like there are big old chunks oh of grips i don't think i realized like it switch. had such a long grip on the back Interesting. Yeah, the, you, I can fit my entire hand back there. Is it a These back two buttons fingers, too? Are those back paddle yeah, there buttons? Are L, there's L4, L5, and R4, R5 back here. And you can configure these to whatever you want. Um, and it's quite clever because I think they put these grips on as well to help airflow. Like if you rest this down on a desk, you're never going to block that vent. Sorry, you're um, like here showing it off and I still had the unboxing going. So it's like <laughs> small here. So now everybody on YouTube, you can see what he's what he's pointing at here. So, yeah. And then on the front, obviously, you've got different configurations as well. These touchpads, really cool. The great haptic feedback in them. And it as a mouse works really great. Really? Um, yeah. And you'll need the mouse if you're going to do any of the like installing third party launchers or emulators or anything like that, unless you decide to just plug in. Well, a say it has a USB to... port, right? Like you could just put a mouse in it. Yep, there's a USB C port on top. So if you get like a USB C dongle, uh, like a hub, you can just plug anything into that and you can just use it then as a PC. Um, That's not bad. And But you'll need to do all of that in desktop mode. Now, the interface when you're in like, I guess, console mode, totally solid. Uh, easy to navigate. It's basically like Steam Big Picture mode, and you and you'll move around it as as if it's a console, as if it's like a Switch, and you can use the any kind of input format you want. So <laughs> D pad, stick, trackpad, or touchscreen. You can navigate with any of those. Super responsive. It looks pretty clean. Really responsive. Yeah, it's a really clean UI. The sound design in the in the UI is, is incredible. I love the noises it makes. It's got real personality. Did you play Simpsons Hit and Run yet? I see it on your I see it on your I have your, played your, Simpsons your bar. Hit and Run is in is in that video that you're watching. So I've played some Simpsons Hit and Run in Dolphin. Uh and it's and it and it's solid. It's a solid UI. You go out to desktop mode, that's clearly like power user. It's it's hidden underneath a like power menu to get to desktop mode. They don't really want you to go in there. I like how uh, but that's where you can do anything. So I'm probably going to interrupt and jump around a little bit as I'm watching this video, but I like how it has the collection section and it has emulators broken up by. That's really cool. That's nice functionality. Yeah, you can make you can make those uh, as many collections as you want. That's a that's a Steam feature. You can make collections. Like say you wanted a collection for all of your Fallout games, you can make one. It's not like folders essentially. Wow. Okay. So I'm looking at the. There's like a little menu screen where you can like do a scaling filter, put a lock on the frame rate mm-hmm. limit. Pretty interesting, yeah. Um, yeah, you've got all, all of those like functionalities are built in at an OS level. So it has like um, AMD uh, FX super resolution. So you can do all of that upscaling stuff if you want to at the OS level. So on the battery, it looked like it, and I, I missed the number, I don't, and I don't want to rewind it, but it looked like it said it had like a little over two hours left, and that was 30% of the battery life. How are you finding this? So it's, it's like about a six yeah, to eight hour battery? or 
Uh, no, it's not a six to eight hour battery. It depends on what game you're playing. So I can get around about two hours if I'm playing something heavy like Far Cry. Okay. Uh, and, and that's, that's not it. great, like but it's not terrible. Two hours. It's not great, but I think the way I play, it's been absolutely fine because the USB port's on the top and that's the way the weight's distributed to. I'm lying down on the sofa and I'm playing games. I'm not, I don't see myself, I don't foresee myself taking this device out Does it... and using it around the place. Do you think you would take it like on a trip? I would. I would. If I'm going on holiday or if I'm going on a road trip, I would. The screen's very glossy. I think you may struggle in a bright area to. Oh, to really? See. That sucks. Very glossy screen. I know you Unless said you it's a nicer screen one. than the Switch, but I feel like that's a thing that the Switch screen does really well. Is so the auto a adjust? Nicer screen. You know? Uh, there is auto adjust, and you can turn the brightness up as well, and like just have it on max if you want to. Okay. Uh, and the 512 gig model comes with like a, an etched glass screen, so it's matte, so it will diffuse a lot of that gloss. That's the one you have? Um, I don't. I have the middle model, the 256. So the highest model, model has the, the D gloss. It does. And that one's, I think, uh, 600 That's like the seven. It's like $700. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty expensive. It's a lot of money for that one. Um, I, I will say though, I've got a screen protector, a glass screen protector on my original switch is about the same levels of glossy as that. I don't know. I don't have a no lead switch as a point of comparison, Okay, but the screen is definitely better than the original switch screen. One is bigger. It's an, it's like a 16 by 10, eight inch screen rather than the switch is 16 by nine. So it's slightly taller, which is really nice to get a little bit more of that vertical real estate. That you Real quick, you Steve. Get. On the desktop mode right now, you have Google Chrome pulled up. You don't search anything uh, inappropriate, right? We're okay. No, we go to like flip screens websites. <laughs> uh, I've also installed Microsoft Edge to play um, uh, Xbox games. You can uh, stream uh, from Xbox Cloud. So I played a little bit of Hitman on there as well. Oh, like from Game Pass? Uh, yeah, you can stream directly from Game Pass on my internet. It's unplayable. Yeah, I was gonna um, say, sure is that like, good was internet, that good? It would be good. No, it's terrible. They're making a Game uh, Pass launcher though for it, right? I don't know about that. I thought we'll see. I thought you I can play if you install Windows on this because uh-huh. that's another thing you can do. You can just wipe this. Did Steam you do OS. that? Because it looks like no, you're running Windows no. on it. Oh, that's the I'm base OS. This. Yeah. Okay. And what is that? Linux. Steam OS, yeah, which is uh, based on Linux, based on I think it's Arch Linux. Okay. Uh, but if you install Windows on it, you can install any of those games. You can install anything from the Xbox Game Pass, and if it uh, and it will play because it's running on Windows. So there's no issue with that. Uh, the only thing is you've then got to use Windows on it, and I can't imagine that being a great experience because it's not like you've got the console mode that you have with Steam. I'm sure someone from the community will build something really cool that will allow you to use the best of both worlds, or maybe you can dual boot or something. I'm sure there will be a solution, but right now there's no way to play Game Pass games on this unless you're streaming. That's a shame. Cloud. That's a shame. Because um, that, I think, I think, I agree with you. Like, that'll happen. But I think when that happens, this thing hits a whole other fucking level in terms of how valuable it is. If you can just download your fucking Game Pass games right to it. Um, I can't see why why there would be any reason Microsoft wouldn't want it to happen. So through that... Yeah, um, right? I mean, why not, mode, right? It's just another device yeah. then that makes... I mean, shit, right? Like, we, we had a whole conversation about it on one more thing about how Xbox has never really tried to get in the mobile space, like the handheld space. You know, they've they've never been... No one really can compete with Nintendo. Like, that's a hell of a fucking value prop, right? Is like, hey... I mean, they, and they've also been updating their games on Steam every single week. They're, they've released updates and patches to, so it works nicely with the Steam Deck. Uh, so it works on Proton, whereas before those games just didn't even boot. The Master Chief Collection, for example, has just got an easy anti-cheat patch, so that's going to be playable soon. You can play online. Master Man. Chief Collection. Fables just got updated. That's exciting. I think Age of Empires is next. So when Age of Empires 2 gets patched, I'll absolutely be playing that because you can easily play that with a touchscreen or with the trackpad, which is really nice. Like the, the new input methods that you have, like those trackpads really allows you to play mouse games that you wouldn't be able to before. That you, You've got that fine granular control that you need with a mouse, and it's really nice. Uh, I've never had a Steam controller, 
but I, I presume if you had one of those, it's a very similar experience. That thing sucked, so what it sounds like, like it's better than that. <laughs> Oh okay. I I think they were I think they work great. The haptics are really cool. I had I had a friend who was an early adopter on the Steam controller and was like, "Oh, this thing's going to like this seems really like it's going to be revolutionary." <laughs> and like it's so bad. It's the worst controller I think I've ever used from like a major manufacturer, you know. Oh, that's a shame. It was so bad. Um but but you know, I like the I think for the majority of people if you're a, if you're a PC gamer and you're on Steam and the majority of your games on Steam, you'll never leave it, right? You'll always be in that that standard console mode, the one you boot up into, and everything's all already there. It's already cataloged nicely. Well, and you said you can like run the Epic Game Store and stuff in that mode, right? Yeah, you can run Epic Game Store in desktop mode. If you install the games in desktop mode, you can then add them to Steam. So Far Cry okay. is installed. Because because Ubisoft took all of their games off of Steam, so I installed Far Cry through Ubisoft Connect, which was one of the worst experiences of my life when it comes to a piece of software. Truly dreadful. Uh, so good job Ubisoft for removing your games from some good software and put it on some crummy stuff. Uh, so I installed it in that. Then I click Add like non Steam game to Steam. Uh, you can either boot just the Ubisoft launcher, and you can boot up the Ubisoft launcher from the console mode and then just navigate and play the games that way or you can add each individual game which is what i'm going to be doing that's so what you probably want to do right so when i click yeah and i downloaded like some artwork and made it look nice and customized it so for the for those external stores there's a little bit more work involved uh but if you're willing to do the work then you can go into the games and you can play them i gotta say this i'm watching the part where you're streaming hitman it doesn't look bad I don't know how it feels, but it looks okay. Yeah, it felt it, the the issue was the sound, which obviously you won't hear. Mm. So it prioritized the frame rate of the video, and the sound was Ooh, it was okay. like it yeah, was really good. awkward. Uh, but it it worked, and I can imagine like I'm running that on 4G. My home internet is is cellular, so I can imagine if you have a good home connection, that would work great. But you can also, if you have a, a PC at home. You can use Steam Link and you can just stream the games over your local network so it's not coming through the internet or anything from your home PC and you can just play them. It'll just play them as if you were sat at your desk, which is quite cool. Um, but yeah, there's a little bit of extra work with those external launchers or with with emulators and things like that. But if you're willing to put the, the effort in, I think it's, it's worth it. But there's a, a little bit more work for everything when it comes to the Steam Deck over, say, a Switch or an Xbox. Which I think is and probably think to be something... expected, right? Yeah, I think, and I think PC, PC players gaming. are used to it. Yeah, like every single game you get, it's like, right, I've got to, like, dial in these settings. Like, how much can I get out of the, my setup versus, like, do I want to prioritize graphics or frame rate? And you can make all those choices. And I think PC players like that, right? It's that freedom, that flexibility. I can play how I want. For me, a bit of a shock to the system. I'm a console player. I've always only ever played on consoles. I'm used to booting up the game. I maybe have two options, performance or quality mode. Whereas now I'm in like Far Cry 6, for example, I've got low, medium, high, ultra just for quality. Then there's like settings for FX, um, uh, the Fidelity FX. I've got the super resolution stuff. There's V-Sync. Do I want that on? Do I want to like have adaptive resolution and then on top of that you've then got all of the stuff that steam os gives you where you can then limit the frame rate limit the tdp set a specific clock speed for your graphics card if you want to do any of that stuff but all of that's hidden in like an advanced mode and the and games do most modern games do try and do a good like best match and and, and guess when you first boot it up it'd be like we're going to try and guess and and do what we think is the right configuration for your system and i think as this console seems to be extremely popular i can imagine developers will do specific profiles we've already seen one from on cyberpunk 2077 there's like a steam deck option which is like the best settings uh for the steam deck and i can imagine more developers will do stuff like that if if uh, the steam Deck continues to sell as well as it is yeah definitely you have to imagine right yeah, I, 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 I can also see people like Ubisoft coming back to Steam because of it, and I really hope Microsoft gets Game Pass on here because I think, like you said, that will really take it to the next level. 
definitely. Yeah, it's 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 definitely an exciting one to think about. So, uh, last thing I just had people they were seeing a little bit of the Simpsons hit and run stuff. Got a good amount of of look at kind of like the you know how things look there. So I'm gonna pull up the Far Cry footage real quick because I I was impressed by how how good this looks. Far Cry extremely impressive. That and I think Wind Waker HD running on a Wii U emulator are the two things that's impressed me the most so far that I've played. Like I expected some of the older games, like I've played some Fallout New Vegas, I've played some Oblivion. Those should run some fine, those old, right? Yeah, they old. should run fine, yeah. They're from like 2005, 2010. So like with this uh, though, right? With Far Cry. This is on current gen house, consoles. How's frame rate? Locked, uh, so it looking good. I can get I can get sixty if I play at low resolution with adaptive uh, resolution scaling. Okay, or I can get what I've done is lo- I've locked it to thirty. I've got the settings on high, and I've put Fidelity FX super resolution on. It is crisp. It looks great. It doesn't feel Solid slow. Thirty frames per second doesn't feel slow at all. Uh, I think if you came from something having just played a sixty frames per second game and then then came to this, you might feel the difference, but just booting this up on on the handheld device feels fantastic it really does feel good and i've always played far cry games at 30 frames per second they've been locked to that for years on consoles it's only this generation that they've made like added performance mode so you can get to 60 fps if you want to but again it's pc so you have the flexibility if you want to play the game at like 45 to 50 fps and that doesn't really bother you on you don't mind some screen tearing or if you want to play the game at 60 and you don't mind a slightly blurrier image then go for it that's that's your choice but for me i'm playing it at 30 frames per second and plays great i've i've adapt i've made my own controller config now so i've got gyro aiming on which is awesome i love it i'm I'm in far cry from yeah yeah i'm hooked on it since um horizon for forbidden west because uh, the the gyro only works. Uh, there's capacitive sensors underneath the sticks. When your fingers on the right, when your thumbs on the right stick, it activates gyro. When you take your thumb off, it disables it. So That's it knows when you're looking and moving. Uh, when you're just like touching buttons or doing things in the menu, stuff like that, gyro is completely off. It's only when you're aiming with the right stick, which is really cool. That's really interesting. That's a that's a really cool function, actually. That's smart. Yeah, it, it works so well. And it's just, it gives you that fine control, which I think a lot of PC people coming with like mouse and keyboard will will want and appreciate. And the fact that you can do it in any game, like all of the controller mappings are done through Steam rather than like on a per game basis. There's like a bunch of templates that you can have, like um, just a controller, controller and mouse, con- controller with like um, touch screen, or you can download ones that the people in the community have uploaded and it shows you like how many times it's been used. Like I downloaded one from Obliv- for Oblivion, which made it play as if it was Skyrim's controller mappings. Ooh, so I was completely familiar with good. it. That's good. I functionality. downloaded it. That's smart. It had like, it had like 400,000 downloads on this controller mapping. So, you know, people are playing with this. It's yeah. solid. You're like that you works. Can rate them and stuff. It's really cool. That's great. I really like that. That's interesting. I so I'm 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 into that. It sounds like it sounds like there's a lot of cool functionality that like they haven't really even like like where's that in the marketing material? That's great. That's really valuable. Yeah, it's it really yeah, it's really thoughtful design, I think. And there's like a ton of shortcuts you can get by holding down the Steam key as well. Like you can take screenshots, for example, as if it's like a switch by holding Steam and pressing the right bumper. So that was something and then I, you can I use those and upload them. Places. That was something I wanted to ask. How how do you see this working? As it like, if I wanted to use this as a device to like stream gameplay from, or like to capture gameplay, is that viable? Is that something that you yeah. could conceivably do? Is that going to work okay with the older stuff and not as well with something like Far Cry that is more labor intensive so I, I on the like unit I, I do want to try it i want to try and because st- you if you do it in desktop mode you can run obs and you can you could potentially just stream as if this was like your only computer yeah you could like plug in your capture card if you have like a usb hub with all of the ports on you could plug a webcam in and use that i think what i will probably end up doing though is looking at this as if it's like a secondary device as if it's like a switch and plugging it into my capture card 
and then yeah. just capturing the footage from could it you that do way. that i guess you could yeah, get you like a do us that. does it have an hdmi it doesn't they're gonna sell a dock an official dock which i think is going to be around about the 60 to 100 okay. price point so theoretically uh, you could drop it in that of, and just plug it in like a switch yeah. And you can just plug it in like a switch then. But at the moment, you can buy any USB to HDMI cable or hub, and it will work. So you can just go on Amazon if you want one. They're like Get a USB-C to HDMI? Yeah, USB-C okay. to HDMI, and then it'll plug in. I plan on getting one because I do want to stream some with like screen capture and see how that works. Um, so I feel I like look, you would Keep an eye on our Twitch. You probably would I might end up streaming some. Sorry, sorry. I, I, I don't think you'd want to use it for modern games probably but i could see it being really useful for trying to stream emulate stuff yeah yeah and not having to be like futzing with an emulator on your computer that's also running everything else right like yeah because because like emu deck you go to emu deck.com i click download i double click to the install script it did everything it, it adds a little icon to your home screen called steam rom Ma manager you drag all of the ROM files into the various folders. It makes all the folders for every console it supports, which is like everything up to and including the Switch, but not uh, and like PS3. So you can do up to PS3 and and uh, load so basically it's Xbox. just PS4 and on. PS4 is excluded and on. Yeah. Um, but you can play up to and including the Switch, which is insane. That and ain't you can bad. just drag them in. So I've played some Wind Waker HD. I've played some Simpsons Hit and Run. I plan on playing some some other games on there. We don't want to see how Game Boy scales on this like huge screen. There's like a like Minish Cap plays like. There's a non-zero chance that PS4 support comes sooner than later too, right? Like I can imagine that. Yeah, the emulator yeah. probably just isn't there yet. But like, how long have we even been like? How long has anyone been working on that? Right? Like, probably not that long. You know, it usually takes a couple of years after the console becomes obsolete before the emulation community really like pops off yeah, picks up yeah. I feel like the switch was Where, like a bit of an outlier because it's older tech so it was like easier to do you know because it's about as powerful as a ps3 right so like that makes sense mm -hmm. whereas like the wii u emulator right i know you we mentioned this i think on one more thing this week um it it's it's been in development for a long time though that obviously the wii u came out in like what 2013 so they've yeah. had a long time to to work on that like 10 years right like fucking great like flawless like wind waker hd runs in native resolution the 800p map perfectly to the screen how does that work Looks with so its good. expectation that you have a second screen though so some games won't work if it needs a gamepad i don't think um although i have seen the i have seen on reddit and i think it does work like this if you plug it into a secondary screen if you have two screens the one on the steam deck acts as the gamepad and your TV acts as the oh. TV. So you can really like... That's awesome. <laughs> That's really same, good. That's smart. Same deal with 3DS games in Citra, the Citra emulator. You can have one screen as like the bottom screen, which would presumably be the one on the, on the Steam Deck. It's the touch screen. And then your monitor or TV as the other screen that you would you would look at so i plan on experimenting with that a little bit more we gotta sure figure that out because if we can episode. if we can figure out a way to make that work we could make like a uh a twitch setup where it's like a like a literal ds and we put the two screens mm -hmm. on it and like could stream ds games that would be really fun yeah I i'd think. love to play some ds games so you know no, you definitely need one so you can stream some pokemon fuck you're making a lot of sense Steve. <laughs> you're making a lot of sense <laughs> Yeah, it's it's honestly the the emulation stuff phenomenal. Like it went and found all of the artwork and stuff for you. The community's done a really good job. Um, so shout out to Emudeck again. You said it has a capture button, right? Uh, it has a button for screenshots. If you hold Steam and press R one, it'll do a screenshot. You can't do video don't think though. It does video? Okay. I don't think it does video now. Hopefully they add that. That would be a nice thing. That's like I could see that being just a small update, right? Video we didn't have video on Switch at launch, it was just screenshots as well. So I could see them adding that, just like hold down R one for a couple of seconds and it'll record thirty seconds. I could see them doing that. I think that makes sense. Um really interesting. Really interesting. Yeah, Steve. I but yeah, I'm su I'm surprised by the device. I really am. I'm surprised by how much I, am I, too. I love this as much as I as I do. But it's really good. It's they've done a really good job with it. So 
I really want one now. And I'm glad that you're the one who convinced me because Sarah's such a fan of you. I'm going to be like, Steve, Steve said it's great. He convinced me. You know, like, she'd be like, okay, I like Just Steve. order one. Just pay your four four dollars or five dollars and and order one it ain't showing up you, for forever right like it's not showing up forever like and and you get you get 72 hours to decide anyway so if they're like do you want it and i can get my money back or no you get it goes into steam credit but it's only five dollars right it's five dollars of steam credit I think I'm gonna pre-order this. I'm gonna do it right now. I think. <laughs> yeah. Which one? Are, which one are you thinking? Because because uh, I had a conversation with with Dad when he was watching the Twitch stream, which is like the 64 gig model, really appealing price point, right? It's three. It's three forty nine in the UK. I think it's three ninety nine in the US. I think that's right. But you only get sixty four gigs of slow storage. Yeah. However, like, how much does a a five hundred to a, a terabyte micro SD card cost these days? It's only like fifty to hundred dollars. They're not expensive, right? Yeah, but isn't it? Just chuck one of those in. You can get it. Yeah, you can get an SSD for pretty cheap. Not an SSD, micro SD card. NVMe SSDs for the Steam Deck very difficult to find. Okay, it's a very specific so you, size. You definitely need at least the second tier one i feel like right that would be my recommendation is get I, the 256 one because it's mvme storage instead of uh emmc yeah, so it's I a just, lot faster that feels like a waste of your money frankly the 400 like, yeah and i was spend I was, the 130 think, bucks yeah when you add on the 512 to well, the cost of like a 512 to one terabyte card you're getting close to the price point of the 256 gig model where yeah, certain, some games right. won't even install on the 64 gig model because that, that it's not enough storage, right? On the base internal storage, you would have to buy a micro SD card it, in order it, to play them. It feels like the top level doesn't offer enough to make I it agree. attractive. I agree. Unle unless the like screen, screen is a big difference, right? But even the so screen is a huge difference, but it's a, a, some people don't like it. It makes the screen look dimmer because it's diffracting the light. Yeah. And some people, and I don't know if it's it's dependent on people's eyes and what they view and things like that i've said the screen looks blurrier what comes with the, this exclusive steam community profile bundle though steve oh uh so it's just a bunch of like fucking like slight like, shit that you can put on your like profile swag. to be like i'm a nerd and i've got a steam deck yeah yeah that's, that's cool. like basically it i've not used any of it i don't give a shit i, mean, I claimed the rewards and i was like yeah whatever i'm not applying that bollocks yeah, I don't know about all that. So it really seems like the difference, aside from the screen, is you get a different carrying case and a virtual keyboard theme. Pass. Yeah. Pass. I'm going yeah. to get the regular It's the one. storage is really what you're paying for. Yeah, that. but, like, um, fuck you that. Can... You can buy the storage for cheaper, right? Like, Yeah, you can buy a one terabyte card for about the same price difference. And but you it can wouldn't... install it yourself, yourself if you want to. Would there be, like, a loading problem, though? No, there's no... Like, apparently, it's about a similar speed. From micro SD and the internal storage. I don't know. Which is I... why I think if you if you do, if you're only going to play like emulators and things on it, that 64 gig model is probably a good one to look at. Yeah. Or older games that aren't taking that much storage. I installed Far Cry 6 on this. It was 85 gigabytes. That's I my that's my concern. That low end model. But it's also yeah. like, am I going to play games like that on this thing? I don't think I will. I think I'm going to want to play those things on like my Xbox. But if, you, if that's the case, then probably just get the cheaper model then. And if you do want to play them, you can just put a micro SD card in and it install on there instead. Does it have a micro SD slot? Or do you have to yes, install it? And you can... No, it's not. A micro SD card slot is right there. I the feel bottom. like I can get away with the 256 model then. Yeah, and just shove shove the show all the emulators on the, then, the card. And just if there's like a big game, you yeah. put it on the base... Like, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's that's the move I've I've done. I've got the two fifty six gig model, but you might get away with the sixty four gig model. It's it's one hundred percent. That's really too small. Choice. I don't think it's worth it. I want the faster. That's load how times. I. That's how I feel. But you know, one hundred and thirty dollars for me feels like a negligible amount of money for something that you don't need anyway, right? Like it's not not money, right? Like I'm not saying like oh I wipe my ass with one hundred and thirty dollars. I'm not that rich, but like. The idea of like, well, if I'm going to buy this really expensive thing that I absolutely don't need, I may as well have the one that runs well, you know? 
yeah, that's why I got the 256 gig model. And I think that middle model does a good balance of price versus features. Whereas I think you're right, that 512 one just goes a little bit too high. It just feels like a like flex. A cost. You know, it's like... Yeah, it's like more than the cost of a PS5 at that point. And it's just, for me, that's just too much. For something that really doesn't feel like it is giving you the same mm -hmm. bang for your buck. Whereas like the 530 model, it's like, yeah, I can swallow that. That feels reasonable. I, I, yeah, that's the one. That's the one I went with. I'll tell you the, what, the middle model. I'd kill for a switch that costs that much money. To yeah, like, wouldn't it, it be great? Where they have to justify, like, okay, it costs five hundred dollars. Yeah. Like, what, 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 what can we shove in this thing? How powerful can we make it? Right? Like, I would love to see Nintendo do that just for. Which I really hope the next Switch can run stuff like Far Cry Six natively, and like can run all of these games that are like cloud only games at the moment that they can all run natively. Like you can run Guardians of Galaxy. I feel like Guardians you have to. On this. I feel like you have to now that this exists. Yeah. You know? Right. As, as a, everyone's comparing the two, right? And they are very different devices. Uh, Nintendo's device is for the everyday consumer, and I don't think for Steam Deck is and will ever be. It's, it's for PC gamers. Or nerds who don't mind a little bit of extra legwork in order to get the games that they really love playing. I love the fact that I can play defunct old games like Simpsons Hit and Run, like all of those Dreamcast games I love that have never been ported to any other console, and I can just play them on this device, along with all of those other games that I love. Uh, and you, it really does feel like the best of uh, the best of both worlds for someone like me. Nice. So... We got a couple questions from the community that I want to jump into here. This first one comes from Joe Kimberlin, who wrote in and said, which would come first, a Steam Deck if I order it now, or Nintendo releasing Wind Waker HD on Switch? <laughs> Great question. I hope it's Nintendo releasing Wind Waker HD on Switch, because because this Steam Deck is meant to be, like, you can't get them until after Q3 at this point, so I'd imagine yeah. you order it now, you're probably looking at November, December. It's the, Yeah, it, sa it says October is what's expected, but... They haven't even gotten through the first round. Fifteen yet. minutes. Yeah, the so. first fifteen minutes of orders is where they're up to in the UK. So, at the uh, moment. if if that game is actually coming to Switch, I would hope it comes this summer. So, hopefully, Wind Waker HD comes first. But I don't know, man. You can't really take that to the bank, is my thing. So maybe you throw your five quid down and see what happens, right? <laughs> I uh, see for me that's what I did with this thing it was like I'm gonna put my put my my four pound and the five dollars put it in and see if it's any good because they let you get your money back it goes into steam credit um and like Macaulay buys enough games on steam anyway that if uh if there was any if I decided I didn't want it, it wouldn't really matter there'd be some weird little simulation game that Macaulay would spend the money on <laughs> Five dollars off the next Euro Truck Simulator. Yeah, that was the first game Macaulay tried on this thing, by the way. I am not surprised. Runs great. That was a very pointed <laughs> joke. <laughs> this next one comes from Rory, who wrote in and said, "How long did it take from payment to delivery?" So I got the email on the Thursday, last Thursday, and I paid for it like instantly. Uh, and then it arrived a, exactly a week later. Anybody on watching Thursday. on YouTube may have just seen a PayPal checkout screen pop up real quick. Uh, <laughs> I may or may not be doing this right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So make a time code real quick. Gotta make sure I didn't just dox myself. <laughs> yeah, definitely blur that screen. <laughs> oh, God. I had to rip everything off of the box when it arrived. Had like my address on it, all sorts. I was just like, Shh, tear that off. Because the box that it ships in is the box for the device. There's no additional box. It comes in the case. Like if you go watch the unboxing on YouTube, uh -huh. there's no outer box or anything. That is the box, which I think is actually really, uh, really clever. All right, hold on. I'm pretty sure I didn't dox myself, but I think we're okay. I think we're okay, everybody. Okay, okay well, hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm agreeing to the Steam. Out. I'm agreeing to the Steam subscriber agreement, Steve. Wow, how often do you buy things on Steam that you haven't agreed to that? <sighs> I don't. I, I I couldn't tell you the last time I bought something on Steam. It's been a long time. <laughs> 
Okay. Okay. Email confirmation has been sent, Steve. Boom. Boom. The Steam Deck. We did it, everybody. We did it. And I got the MU Deck webpage open. So that's you <laughs> and Chewy ordered one now. <laughs> so like everyone of flip screen is going to have a Steam Deck. Hopefully by the end of the year. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Maybe I'll be able to come back from my honeymoon and, and enjoy it. <laughs> Yeah, don't, don't get it before your honeymoon. Sarah would just be like, Pete, put that away. Seriously. Oh, I, yeah, I ain't bringing it. On a honeymoon. I'm bringing no video <laughs> games on the honeymoon. They're staying at home. Uh, this one comes from Paul Curry, who wrote it and said, why does it look like an N-Gage? And I'm going to turn that I question just, back around on does, you, Paul. Right? Why aren't you stoked that it looks like an N-Gage? <laughs> Good old taco phone. <laughs> <laughs> I think we answered this one already, I, but oh no, go ahead, go ahead. I think it looks more like a Sega Game Gear. Like if you go, look it looks a lot like a Game Gear. Game Gear, yeah. It's got that vibe. It's clearly a device designed by engineers and not by designers. Like you look at the, you look at the Switch, for example, and it's like sleek. It's like thin, and they haven't worried about any sculpting nice or anything. Matte. Like, controllers nice mac controllers and stuff but it's not very ergonomic like the positioning of the sticks has always felt off like i always felt like they should be inline sticks like they were on the wii u gamepad and it feels like a device designed by designers whereas the steam deck they're like well we want to get this screen in we want to have all these controller inputs who cares if it's the size of a fucking house because it feels good in your hands. And I quite like that approach. It just feels very, very different. So I believe you responded to this one already. Um, this one comes from that doc guy. You said, what systems can MU deck run? And you said it's everything from basically as far back it's, as you can go yeah. to switch, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Anything that can run in emulation station or anything that comes on uh, retro watch will run. Uh, on top of the additional emulators, uh, Citra and CMU. Uh, but everything else will run. So you can run PSP on here, PS3, all the way back to NES. You can play DOS games with DOSBox, all sorts of stuff. What about Anything the, you can think of, this thing will run. What about the huge library of the Vita? Uh, oh, I don't know if there is a Vita. <laughs> as you said, as you, as you hatefully said on Discord, there's only like five games, so. Yeah, hatefully, hatefully. I have a Vita <laughs> on my desk. No, uh, miss me with that shit, okay? <laughs> Nobody appreciates the Vita as much as me on this show. This one comes from Tiger underscore Millions over on Twitter who said, how is Steve going to be able to have any semblance of a life with Elden Ring available on the go? Seriously, I really want to buy it. I was so close to buying like um, uh, Dark Souls 3, I think was the one that yeah. um, Timberwolf said that I should I should play. But I don't know. I just I need to finish Elden Ring on Xbox first, so I can say that before I've you done start it again, before I start anything else. And I and like Psycho. this weekend is like time to play games because it's a four day weekend in the UK. But uh, I'm probably not going to end up playing Elden Ring because I really want. I wanted to come into this episode with like thoughts on the Steam Deck so we could like talk about it. So so far, my my first day off this weekend, I've played no no Elden Ring, <laughs> although I had planned to prop previously. That makes sense. So this is actually a good question. We haven't touched on this specifically. Uh, Trendy Brendy wrote, wrote it and said, how does it feel in the hands? Visually, I've been really averse to the stick placement. I agree. I feel like the stick placement feels bad. Oh, it's not. It's okay. It's the best. Good. <laughs> um, so it, it fits perfectly. Like your hands naturally rest there. Uh, so you, you will like very comfortably fit on it. And I, I have really small hands, like tiny hands for a man. Um, and they just, and they fit perfectly. The, the only buttons I some, sometimes struggle with and you have to position, you have to like kind of shift your hands to, to reach them are the cheese slices and hamburger buttons. They're a little bit too far up that you can't quite, can't quite reach. But I think if you have bigger hands, you would, you wouldn't struggle. Okay. Uh, but I have to kind of shift the the Steam Deck down down in my palms a little bit in order to reach them. Um, I thought I would hate them too. The D pad being all the way off to the left and the A B X Y being all the way off to the right. Um, but it feels feels perfect. 
like I've had no issues with it whatsoever. The only thing is just like muscle memory because it feels a hundred percent like uh, a switch or like uh, an Xbox controller. These sticks feel like Xbox controller sticks, but with a little less grip on them because they've got that haptic sensor. There's no rubber on top. Um, that I constantly will like go up to the right in order to, from like the stick. I'll yeah. go up to the right in order to press the A B X Y buttons, and they're like directly to the right. So it's uh, once you get used to, it, I think you'll you'll be fine. But it's way more comfortable than a Switch controller. What do you mean by that? As in, like it's it's way more comfortable. This is way more comfortable to hold than the Switch is in my hands. Got with it. The okay. Joy Cons attached. Okay. Uh, okay, and the last question is a bit of a doozy. This one comes from Andy Radford, who wrote it and said, is the Steam Deck the ultimate in gaming? Obviously, you can play PC games, but then there's Xbox games, and more recently, Sony has started porting PlayStation games to PC, not to mention the fact that it's both handheld and docked can be played on the TV. So is this the ultimate all-in-one solution for gaming? Uh, I don't think so. I think a PC probably is, right? I, I understand the whole handheld versus docked thing i just don't think for the average joe i don't think this is i think there's too much work involved i think most people that yeah. are, are console players they want to be able to just go oh i buy this game i download this game and i play it and it works there's a lot of fussing involved in this and if you're a nerd like i, I know that my dad who who wrote in and, and i wrote in with this question um would be fine with it because he's used to like running emulators on a raspberry pi for example like we built this arcade cabinet behind me together so it's like we he'd have no problem i have no problem i'm a nerd like we're used to used to this kind of thing but if you're just someone who wants to play apex legends with your friends um uh, maybe this is not the best device for you to do it on when there's there's other consoles available but i i do think P, like pc being an open platform and the Steam Deck being a PC, I think it's going to be difficult for other consoles to kind of justify not being open, like not allowing emulators on, not allowing other stores, uh, because it's kind of like a glimpse of the future for me. It's like, oh, I can, I don't have to worry about where the game comes from, because if it is a PlayStation game, I can play it. If it is on Xbox, I can play it. If it is on the Epic's Game Store or the Ubisoft Store or GOG, I can download them, and I I really like that. Um, and I know it's stuff something that PC players have been saying for years, uh, but it's it's nice to finally be able to experience that on a handheld device. Very nice. Yeah, I'm I'm inclined to agree, uh, based on what you've said and and what I understand about the system. I think it seems like the kind of thing that's like going to be great for the enthusiast and somebody who's willing to invest in time and optimization and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think the thing that I am most interested in about it is what does like the homebrew community on this thing look like a year from now, two years from now, right? right? Like, can you? They, they've managed to make Emu Deck within like three weeks of this being in people's hands, right? Which is like when you think about what homebrew looks like on like Switch or PSP or Vita or like any of those other handheld devices. That's usually like the thing that they're trying to do, and it's already done. So it's like. Mm -hmm sky's the fucking limit on where we can go from here and like yeah i wouldn't be surprised if I the actually, developer community really makes it a more attractive de device for i think they will the yeah. type of person who was like if you were like me right where you're like i had a psp and i hacked it and i put shit on it like that kind of i feel like <laughs> that lineage is being carried through here to the steam deck which is cool yeah it is and i can see like launches being put onto the steam sto uh, steam store for so you don't have to do any of the going out to desktop mode. I can see like an itch, itch, uh, itch. Io launcher going onto the Steam store. I could see all of that stuff happening. Uh, but that's one thing I never mentioned. In the settings, there's a developer mode. You just put it on, and then you can just like compile games and put them directly on and stuff. So there's like, it's totally open. Uh, and I know that stuff, stuff that Xbox has been doing, like you can just enable development development mode on a uh, on a retail Xbox. But for like PlayStation and Switch, it's it's been restricted. You have to like apply. There's a, there's a monetary cost involved. Uh, whereas this, if you have a PC uh, and you're developing games, I presume you could even develop them on this if you installed Windows on it. And I don't know if it's powerful enough in order to run something like Unity. Uh, and you can just you can just play the games, which is really cool. I do plan on going through and just like 
trying a bunch of like little indie games that I've missed out on from Steam or from from Itch. Uh, I might even sign up for like the Sock Pop um, Patreon because like three dollars a month and just see what they've they've got on the go. Uh, I think it could be really cool. Awesome. Well, I'm interested in hearing more about it as you spend more time with it. Um, I think the thing I'm most interested to see is like. Is this a thing you're still using every week or like on a daily kind of basis, like six months from now, or is it collecting dust? Cause it was like a fun project to set it up. So and then I'm, you're like, eh. I'm, I'm curious because like, I don't know what your gaming habits are like, but mine are very cyclical. So like I've spent a lot of time on, I spent a lot of time on PS5 cause I got the PS5. I finished uh death loop and ratchet and clank. I then moved on to horizon. I played a bunch of Elden ring on Xbox I've played a little bit of Kirby on Switch, but none of those things all really happen at the same time apart from the Switch. When I'm playing like a secondary game like Kirby on the Switch, I'll constantly play it. I could see myself playing stuff like um, like a Disco Elysium or something similar like that every day in bed, finishing off my day with the Steam Deck. And that's the kind of thing that you probably could get like four to six hours out of this device yeah. with, which I think is really cool. Uh, but I'm, I I don't know if it'll be an everyday thing for me. And I don't know if the device is designed to be an everyday thing for people I, because that's fine. it's like a secondary device. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's the thing is like, to your point, none, none of the consoles I own are an everyday device right now, right? Like I'm, I'm, it's like, what am I playing right now? And I'm playing it on whatever platform it's best on, right? Yeah. Or most affordable or whatever. Um, I think that's all it needs to do is like be a thing that is actively in rotation for you. It's the other side of it that I like worry is a hard word, but that's my concern, I guess. Right. Is like, is this a hot thing to like fuck around with and set up? And then like, cause yeah, you did I'm that with your me, PSP, yeah. right? You hacked your PSP to be like, I'm going to play these old games on it. And then you like played like Minish Cap for 10 minutes and you're done. Right. And it's like, okay, that was mm -hmm. fun. Um, so I wonder, well, I would have played Metroid fusion on it if I wasn't streaming it. And if right. I could like play games like that, on like a really nice ergonomic device with a big beautiful screen then great then i'm I'm totally open to do it one thing i did just remember though i do want to touch on about the device well two things really is the noise in general the sound of this thing speakers fuck me they're great if you listen to some of the footage that i put up of, of far cry 6 and it'll be going up it'll be up on our youtube channel by the time this goes out uh that's all like off off device so i'm just recording the speakers but they kind of have to be that loud in order to drown out the fan. The fan gets it's noisy. very, very, very loud. Um, and if you wear like headphones when you're playing your devices, I don't think it'll be a problem. If you've got this docked or plugged into a TV and it's like the other side of the room, won't be an issue. But you're holding something that gets like warm close to your face and it's like exhausting all of this heat out. Uh, I'm thankful that I don't seem to have one of the, the early Steam decks. I don't know if they've switched fans or something that had like a high pitched whine on mm -hmm. some of the fans, but I know that some people have had issues with that. Yeah. Uh, but the fan is loud. It's not unbearably loud when you're playing something like a Far Cry that's that's like got shooting and like noise, right. and like dialogue. You can still listen to it because the speakers get loud enough to drown it out, but it may be something that you want to play. Uh, with with headphones or if you're in a quiet room like if you're playing this in bed at the end of the day with with your partner next to you it's something to think about because it does get quite loud okay good to know but all right thank you to everybody who wrote in to this week's show with your questions all about the steam deck i'm sure we'll be talking about it more in the the months and weeks to come here um as steve spends some more time with it and as you know updates come and and you know the ecosystem continues to evolve um, I imagine it's something that we'll want to keep covering and talking about, especially if I get one. So, um, yeah, thank you to everybody who wrote in. If you want to uh, send in your own thoughts or ideas or questions about the Steam Deck, uh, go go for it. Like I said, we'll be talking about it. So maybe not next week, but whenever we inevitably circle back to it, you know, we'll have your questions handy. <laughs> so feel free to write in with those if you missed uh, the boat on this episode. Uh, and again, if you want to get some more content from us, if you want to show your support, you want to go become a patron, head over to flipscreen.games. That's our website. We have links to all of the places that you can get us on the web, all the ways that you can support the show, uh, get your thoughts read on the air, all that good stuff. So go ahead over to the website, and uh, however you choose to engage, we appreciate you spending your time here with us at Flipscreen Games. So for this week's episode of Flipscreen Games Podcast, I've been Pete. He's been Steve. 
Hold up the Steam Deck real quick. Hold it up. Hold it up quick, quick. He's been the Steam Deck. Right there. That's him. Look at him. Beautiful. And we'll see you next week. Oh, wait. Hold on. He's doing a thing. He's muted. What's the thing, Steve? What are you doing? I was going to say, I guess, it, I guess it is a masculine device. It is a he, really, isn't it? Rather than a she. Really broad shoulders. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Take care. We'll see you next week.